Thank you for listening to Femtalk 89 FM. We are on air in Suva, and it is time for another episode of this new season of Radio with Pictures on My TV. Thanks to the support of UNDP's CAFE program, supported by the European Union, DFET, and the International Women's Development Agency, as well as Oxfam. Welcome back to another episode of Radio with Pictures. In this series, we've been discussing how we can't advance our economic, um, economically or advance <coughs> our societies when you leave half of the population behind. However, obstacles remain despite it being more than 15 years, 20 years even, since the Fiji government ratified CEDAW. Some of these obstacles, particularly for women in rural centers, are the lack of water and electricity, poor roads and bridges. Some of the obstacles are simply about women and young women of all diversities not even being enabled to participate in decision making when development plans are being formulated. So how do we make the changes? What are the solutions women want to see? We're joined in this episode by Pushpa Manu. Pushpa is the president of the Akriti Mothers Club in Nosori. Laisani Mateele from the Nasilai Women's Group. Laisa Rokovu from the uh, Lomai Viti Song Song of Akamarama. But she'll also be raising issues um, for women of Serua and Namosi. And last but not least, Vasiti Dakao of the Nosori Youth Group. Pushpa. What are the solutions? What are the changes you want to see in the next five years? Uh, Sharon, it's not uh, about five years. If I can get a solution about within s three to six months, it will be fine. But yeah, five minutes, uh, five years is a long time. Hope to see some improvements because I'm talking about drainage and the road system. Our road system, our road is very, very, very narrow. We have the school, the shops. And uh, I think since our um, area where I we, I'm staying in Nasori, that's in Vodi Road, it's a uh, certain part of that is not a town area. So, I think government so it comes is under rural, under rural development. We are writing letters, talking to the Commissioner Central, our advisory council, I, I don't know where he is at the moment, so we can talk to him. We directly load letters. We want our drainage system to be proper because mm -hmm. it's very improper. We have the shop which operates 24-7 and uh, they're doing their car wash. Okay. So we really need the drainage because once it drains, our drain get, uh, I mean, it gets blocked. Mm -hmm. And uh, our food, like we normally do the backyard gardening. So we have the fresh f uh, food from yeah. our garden. Mm -hmm. It's very hard because once the flood water comes in, it's very unhygienic. Okay. Um, in a couple of earlier episodes of Radio with Pictures, we heard, um, or well, we're seeing that road improvements are taking place along the Suva Nosori corridor, so from the capital city all the way to yeah. Nosori Airport. But it seems the roads off the main highway are being forgotten. What kind of population are you talking about for Vudi? Um, See, Sharon, we are just 15 minutes away from that Nasori town. And I'm uh, regarding myself as a rural woman, so mm. I represent them. I really want them to be using good roads, even the drainage, which I'm talking about at the moment. So they can have their share of uh, food, they can have their movements are easily for, from the place to town even to health centers, like others are saying. Mm. So I'm really talking about them. So are you saying that before five years are up, you'd like to see an improvement in the way decisions are made? I mean, representation by district advisory councillors? I've been in Vodi for past, uh, past 26 years, the same problem, and I'm raising this issue for how many, I don't know, how many years? And you mentioned that there's some, some in the Vudi area that are outside of yeah. the town boundaries. And that's really where there's sometimes tension in the development system because they say, oh no, you have to go in, in another community. Actually, they tell us you have to wait. Yeah. Why wait? Because mm. it's not, uh, we're not talking about the town area, the city area. Where, mm. you know, everything is getting developed, high buildings and all. What about the rural areas? 
Okay. We are providing much more than the uh, city areas, so we should be regarded the first ones. Okay. Thank you, Pushpa. As you said, living in a community for more than 20 years, and you can't wait another five no, years no, for no, these can't. changes. The five years is a long time. Yeah. Laisani, do you feel the same, that you can't wait for five years to see some of the changes that, that you're concerned about? Thank you. It's my, my issue is uh, school dropouts. Well, I, I want to see in five years' time, I don't want to see any school dropout in the village. Mm. And what, what, why are they dropping out of school? There's free education? Well, yes. No, there's are some parents, they can't provide educational needs mm. for the children because they are not going to work. Mm. And, uh, and some of them can't provide lunch. So it's as simple as not being able to provide lunch? Yes. For now, there's mm. free education and uh, free bus fare. It's the Link other cost. To this, uh, health security, they can provide lunch. Mm. They, they can just give uh, cassava alone. They have to get balanced meal mm. for the ch children. We've heard in, in some of the earlier episodes of Radio with Pictures of the concerns about youth unemployment. You're now talking about um, school dropouts because they're at about Form 5, Form 6 level. That's going to add to this growing number of unemployed youth if they can't go back to school. What do you think will happen in five years' time if these issues aren't addressed? Uh, some of these uh, girls, school dropout, especially the girls, they got pregnant in the village. This is uh, a main mm. uh, issue, eh? mm. because they got pre pregnant. And the boys are just going around in the village doing nothing. Mm. They can't even go to the plantation to plant because there are plenty of problems in the village, mm. especially this uh, internet thing. Okay. Yeah. So there's growing social problems yes. because already, and this is going to get worse, that's yes. what you're concerned about. Okay, thank you, Laisani. Laisa, um, you're a member of the Lomai Viti Song Song of Akamarama, but uh, you said that the women from Seru and Namosi have a specific need at the Nabua market. What would you like to see addressed within five years to, to attend to the needs of your group? You make handicrafts, the women that come down to Nabua market. What, what are the improvements you'd like to see? Uh, for Seru and Namusi, uh, I'd like to see the market, Nabua market be improved. Because as it is right now, women, they build in their own sheds and make their own tables to sell their crops. And uh, sometimes when they come down to the um, women and the young women from the, the villages of Namosi and Serua, the upper lands, highlands, they, they <coughs> normally sell their crops very cheap because mm. they don't have a a proper place where they can sell their mm. goods. And then they go back home with very little to take, to try and uh, put everything on the table to feed the family. Thank Do you. you think that in five years, or before five years, instead of these women having to come and struggle to set up market stalls in Nambua town, that someone should be going up and buying their produce for them? from them rather than this struggle of coming down to town and, and selling things for cheap? Should we have an investment in, in the buying of produce from women who are farmers? Well, as we've heard, there's a lot of Chinese around uh, uh, Navua, around Syria and Namusi. I think they would be able to go right up to the, yeah. the villages in Namusi and Syria and try and get, buy crops from them. But otherwise, they'll come down to the market themselves. And yes. Them so if you don't have a good market in terms of where you are in your home or in your community, you're forced to come down to town. That's what does right. this cost them to come down from Siru and Mosi down to Nabu town? Um, I think for the what about it might cost them about uh, fifty. Mm to sixty dollars and imagine if they come and sell their crops with less than that and it's uh, at a loss isn't yes it? that's yeah. right 
Okay. Thank you, uh, Lisa. Vasiti, um, what is the development plan for you for the next five years? What would you like to see? Uh, thank you, Sharon. Uh, the next five years, uh, I would like to see, as for my issues, I, I was talking about myself here. Uh, I would like to see the change of uh, 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 the improvement of uh, children education and uh, and uh, less unemployment in my village. Okay, now you're a single mum. Yes. You have children at school, which yes. is why you're concerned about the access to education. For a single mum, I mean, what would you? What's your budget uh, to be able to provide for yourself and your children? We just heard from Laisani that. Um, some of the families can't afford to to pay for some of the school expenses, including lunches, and yet we're seeing dropouts at, at the high school level. Um, are you experiencing the same thing? Is this something that you'd also like to be addressed? Yes. Uh, my concern is uh, that uh, actually I... I File, I claim uh, maintenance for my husband, and uh, my husband has been supporting my children's uh, education and their needs. So, it, so you're 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 in a good situation where you you are able to claim maintenance, and is it paid regularly and managed uh, well? No. No. Okay. <laughs> so, they just the Fiji Women's Rights Movement just put out some brochures about uh, claiming maintenance and and other things in terms of the Family Law Act. What has been the problem? How can, how can single mothers be supported better then in, in, in terms of your legal rights? In my situation, I, I join a small, a, a small business and uh, I, I do sell, sell a food bag in town and that's where I get my income from and yes. What kind of support do you get for this small business? Because um, is it easy? Because you're having to manage your small business as well as your children as a single parent. Actually, my mom is there. She always did for me to help me out okay. in my business. All right. So you're lucky right now. You've got a mom <laughs> to, to help you, yes? Okay. And how old are your children? Uh, my older one is nine years old and my younger one is uh, seven years old. Okay. So let's talk about the 20-year development plan, right? So for you, Vasiti, in terms of 20 years down the line, as your, daughter, your daughters, your children, yeah, as your children grow up, what, what would you like to see in terms of Fiji and, and our level of development? Okay, uh, in the 20 years time, I would like to see my children uh, be well educated and uh, they should be, uh, I would like to see them graduated in a university. Okay, great. Thank you. Coming back to you, Lisa, in terms of the issues for the Song Song of Akamarama and Lomai Viti, Serua and Namosi. 20-year plan, what's the vision for Fiji for you as a member of, of your community, as a leader in your club? What would you like to see? Uh, first of all, for Lomai Viti, right now, the, they are looking for ways to try and buy a building in Suva. Uh, we've had one in the Buka, but that has been taken by the provincial office. But as it is right now, we are trying to look for, uh, so within 20 years, mm. or maybe less than 20 years, we might be able to get one. And as for Serua Namosi, uh, for Serua, they were telling me that they were looking forward into buying the old uh, Nabua hospital. But uh, negotiations, I think, has been underway. And uh, for Namosi, they haven't told me anything mm -hmm. about uh, what they are planning. Okay. But uh, for the two provinces, Lomaviti and uh, uh, Serua, I'm so thankful that uh, they have uh, planned so I, I just want to come back to, to you, um, Lysa and, and Vasiti, in terms of decision-making. 
are there any changes you'd like to see in the next five to 20 years? Well, let's say more five years rather than 20 in terms of women's participation in decision making. We have a very strong Song Song of Akamarama network um, across Fiji, but could there be any changes to the structures to, to support women's participation, particularly younger women? Um, first of all, uh, Sharon, I'd like to say thank you very much for the FEM link. Um, the last uh, consultation that we had last week, I managed to take a list of names of young women because uh, most of the young girls, teenage girls, they don't know that they are a member of the Sangha Sangha Vat Kamarama automatically when they are 18 years old. So when I took the names down last week, uh, Andy Fee was... Uh, uh, very happy because uh, this is something that we have been trying for long to mm. try and get more young women into the Sangha Sangha Vakumaram. So for the next 20 years I think there will be a lot of uh, young women than older women. Thank you. Thank you. Vasiti, you're a single mum right now and we keep hearing that uh, you know, there are issues of unplanned pregnancies, teenage pregnancies in the village level, in the village communities. How can young women be supported to be part of decision making when you've also got the, the responsibilities of mother care, um, particularly from a very young age? What, what needs to change to, to have you um, part of this decision making? and supported even though you're single parents. In my Actually, uh, I attend uh, lots of uh, awareness uh, workshop and that a workshop uh, helped me out in uh, leading my role of uh, family, family role. Okay, all right, so keep supporting young women like yourselves to, to participate, to, to learn, to feel empowered. Yes. Okay, thank you. Laisani, looking ahead to 20 years and, and this whole issue of young women's participation, how can we get more young women and older women working together? So I have to encourage the leaders to, to see the teenage girls get involved in the song song because from there they can learn a lot, especially the sewing clothes, cooking, and we're doing fabric uh, painting. From that they can earn money mm -hmm. if they got no job. Eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, encourage the local government to work with the rural leaders mm -hmm. to arrange some workshops and orders for the school dropouts. Okay. And what about the young men? Because we're hearing that um, young women are certainly getting themselves organized um, in their clubs, in their villages, in their communities, but the young men don't seem to want to get involved. Okay, for the time being, we, we have, we got a youth club, yeah. So the young men are involved in that uh, mm. one too, and they are doing environment cleaning. Okay. Yeah. It's a riverside, yeah. So do you think that there's a need for, for example, through the Song Song of Akamarama, because this is an issue that's being raised through um, the village clubs, that you might need to be sharing some ideas of how to involve more young men in, in village activities, in community activities? What do you think? Is, is it, I know it's the burden once again on women to come up with the solutions, but um, is that? Uh, thank you, Sharon. No, it's not a burden. Mm. It's the mother's role and their responsibility. Uh, for Sanga Sanga of, Ma, of, Ama, of Akamarama, we only concentrate on women, mm. young women. Mm. And uh, for young boys, I think it would be better if the young women and the young uh, boys, the youths, join in them. Mm. But they have their church groups mm. in which they work together, and they also work for the community. Mm. 
Okay, so coming back to you, Pushma, then. Um, you've lived in uh, Budhi for a little over 20 years, 26 Six. years. Um, in terms of 20 years down the line, um, what would you like to see in Budhi in terms of the development? Where should things be? And, and particularly the, the participation of women and, and young women in, in these development plans. Uh, well, firstly, Sharon live 20 years and five years. Firstly, in uh, our advisory council, we have almost, I think, 18 or 19. One of them is, only one lady is there. Mm. So we can't, I mean, whenever we invite her, she always comes. But the problem is, how can a lady, just a lady go mm. so many areas? Like she's from uh, Bau, She's looking after all of mm. No, sorry. So we want more women to be there so that women do understand our women, right? It's in uh, us too, we feel um, very insecure to go and approach our men. They won't listen. Well, they'll say, yes, 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 and then forget that yes. So they'll how never do we come around. That, even for we, men. So if men are on a committee, Shouldn't they be thinking this is what a woman will need and this is what a man will need? How do we change that? We have to change their mindset. In my area, I have changed quite a lot. About almost 50 of them are now. It's like a, when, whatever we say during the meetings, and yes. So now yeah, they, they're cooking food for us. So I think little by little, we're going to change them. So what, what's, what's been the secret to your success in changing these attitudes and the way men are like, supporting uh, uh, you as women? Once uh, when we have our meetings, at uh, times we ask them, you know, just like after seven, can we have a meeting? Are you people free? Yes. So that time they, those people, they think that, especially the main figures, they think, oh yeah, these people are inviting us. Oh, there must be something. So when, once we approach them, when the meeting is started, then we talk to them. Mm. So really, they really understand us, but it's the way we approach them. Okay, thanks, Pushpa. Laisani, we've heard, for example, from Nanise, um, from the Nosori village, um, that she's been able to you know, keep trying, keep trying, and, and getting issues through the Bosivakoro, the Tikina Council. So listening to Pushpa, what are some of the strategies you are using to get the issues raised through, raised by the women, into the, the village decision making? Thank you. In my village, the, the third week of every month we do the Mosvakor. We, like as women, we got time to raise our issue up to the Mosvakor. Uh, that's where we raise our voice. And the issues that you're raising, are these the same issues that you were just talking uh, about, yes. the school dropout? Uh, how, how has that, um, what are some of the changes you've seen as a result of raising these issues? But uh, for the time being, this, they haven't uh, called this uh, organized to organize the workshop, the Ministry of Youth. Eh? They are trying to organize them to make workshops for the school dropouts mm. so that can, they can have vocational schools. Yeah. Give them that kind of uh, yes. support to, to keep educate, keep, keep yes. participating in, in any and training. And we are trying to encourage uh, young girls mm. to join the women's club. Um, in terms of these dropouts, what are the numbers that uh, how many dropouts? For this year, there are five, uh, five girls and uh, six boys. They reach up to six, form six level. And uh, three of those girls got pregnant for the time being. Okay. Yeah. So should young women um, be allowed back into the school system if they've had, if they've accidentally gotten pregnant? If we're not providing health services, um, reproductive health services and um, education. Is it the girl's fault that she's dropped out? Can we be putting them back into school? What do you think? I think uh, yes. <coughs> because uh, 
grandmothers will be willing to look after the kids. And there is Matua school in Nambua where we can take the, the mm. teenagers to. So do you think that model should be used across Fiji? That we is this one of the changes we need to see yes. sooner rather yes. push sooner rather than later? Yes, because uh, never mind if a girl becomes a pregnant if she's a mother. Like as we really want to educate ourselves, so we can put them in schools. Ministry sh should allow this. Even they ca we can have the vocational centres mm. where they can learn their sewing and all and then later on they can qualify and uh, and something for themselves. Laisani, I can see you nodding. Is this a thought for you to take back to uh, Nasalai Women's Group? Oh, yes. We are trying the mission of youth. Mm. Make some workshops so they can get vocational schools and so that they can learn more. If they are not working, they can just make their own business. Mm. Okay. So, Pushpa, Laisani, Laisa, and Vasiti. National Development Planning, consult, National Development Consultation process has taken place. The national budget will be announced in November. Um, looking ahead to the five-year plan and also the 20-year plan, you've shared your, your priorities. What is that one message you'd like to communicate to someone from the Ministry of Finance or, or National Development in relation to your issues? So Vasiti, for the No Sorry Youth Group, what's that one issue you want them to make sure? Please make sure it's in the development plan, make sure it's in the national budget. What is it? Uh, I would like to see the, uh, the Ministry of Finance is, uh, to to make an uh, awareness workshop in the village to make a single mom uh, more educated in what they learn from the min uh, Ministry of Finance in in order to lead their family role. Okay, so economic empowerment? Yes. So invest in the economic empowerment programs for single mothers. Thanks, Vasiti. Lisa, what's that one message to finance and planning? Uh, one message would be <coughs> to try and uh, give more money to the family because family <laughs> has been <coughs> the one that's getting all the young girls down and uh, single mothers and uh, I think that would be a best idea okay. and then the women can have uh, their own uh, radio program rather than uh, relying on uh, my TV, TV <laughs> one and all these <laughs> so okay. well, we, well, we can transmission. Um, well, we can freely <laughs> speak out our mind. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you so much um, Lisa. Laisani, one message to finance and planning as they start finalizing their issues. I would like to, I would like the government to put more much on the Ministry of Youth and Education mm -hmm. so that uh, they can provide workshop in the village. And let's, and we need to look at ways that families can keep their children in school, particularly okay. high yeah. school, yeah, yes. where um, there seem to be this growing number of dropouts. Push box. Before planning their budget, they should come into rural areas and talk to the women first and then prepare your budget. Okay, that's a really good idea that they should be doing every time, not just um, once every five years. Thank you so much, Pushpa Manu from the Akriti Mothers Club, Laisani Matele from the Nasalai Women's Group, Laisa Rokovu from uh, the Lomai Viti Song Song of Akamarama, but also raising the issues of the members from Serua Namosi, and of course Vasiti Dakao from Nosori Youth. Thanks for joining us in this episode of Radio with Pictures. The final episode in this series airs next week. I look forward to your company. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. We will be back the same time next week for another episode of Radio with Pictures. And don't forget to tune in to Fem Talk 89 FM Suva if you're living in the Nosori Navua Corridor or Fem Talk 89 FM Lombasa from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. weekdays in Lombasa Town.